thing. So you held rates steady. There's a minority yeah, in the market who think that you should have hiked rates this time. Why didn't you? We didn't because our uh, we are on track with respect to meeting our inflation target, which is basically the driver for uh, our policy decision. So we have reviewed again the situation. Uh, that's what we do every six weeks. And the, our assessment is that uh, inflation remains firmly under control, well inside our target uh, for this year and also looking forward to the, our policy horizon over 2018 to 2019. So uh, there was no reason to uh, change our policy setting at this time. Uh, the currency has been on the weaker side of uh, 50 for the most part of, of, I guess, this year. But my first question there is, that has to be deflationary, isn't it? And second is, I know you, your team follows the data very closely. What would you say is the probability that you will be hiking rates between now and, say, June of next year? Uh, again, uh, David, we're uh, very data dependent on this. And on your earlier comment mm -hmm. about being deflationary, I don't think that's necessarily the consequence of uh, the modest depreciation of the so uh, in recent months. Mm. From our perspective, actually, uh, it's a question of horizon. So if you say that uh, it's the weakest right. over the last over year to date, that's true, factually. But if you look at it over a longer horizon, let's say over five years, uh, the peso actually uh, is just right in the middle of the pack if you look at the benchmark of ASEAN uh, currencies. Um, and on that note, I know you don't target a specific level for the peso, Governor, but he just help us understand what level does the peso need to get to before it makes you uncomfortable, or at least the rate of change from the current level that would make you perhaps rethink your, 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 your current thesis on the currency? Our policy on exchange rate is that uh, it is market determined. We allow it to, we allow it to float. Uh, the peso mm. is not pegged to the U.S. dollar, for example, such that uh, we are compelled to move if the U.S. changes its policy uh, settings. So we allow the peso to seek its level uh, in a free environment. So that's been the policy of the BSP. And re very recently, fundamentals in the BSP, the fundamentals of the economy show a current account deficit, and that's being reflected in the, in the slight weakening of the peso. But currently, the peso is relatively stable at its current level. Okay. What are some of the risks, uh, Governor, facing the, the current account and potentially if that gets pushed into deficit? Is it something that you're watching when it comes to the impact of the fair, when it comes to you know, decline in outsourcing revenue? What are you looking at? You know, uh, a current account deficit is not necessarily unhealthy, especially for an economy like the Philippines where we are uh, actually ramping up our investments. Uh, and also, uh, may I point out that in the first quarter, yes, there was a current account deficit. Actually, in the second quarter, the current account deficit is actually not a deficit, but a small surplus. So it's not a foregone conclusion that the uh, current account deficits uh, will be a uh, consistent uh, outcome for the Philippines. But nonetheless, uh, the deficit is to, to a great extent being driven by ramped up invest, uh, imports. And the economy is growing uh, strongly, and that's quite consistent. Governor, just looking into next year, inflation is not an issue now. It's still within the contained uh, target range. But if you take a look at the tax reform proposal, what sort of implications do you see that for growth and inflation in particular, particularly if you're talking and looking at the consumption tax aspect? Okay, on the inflation impact of the tax reform, uh, based on our latest assessment, uh, there will be a modest uh, impact, on assuming that the tax reform gets done this year. Uh, there, there could be a modest uh, impact in 2018, but we don't expect that to persist, and it should uh, taper away by 2019. Nonetheless, even with that impact, we don't see uh, the inflation target being breached. And also, uh, we see a lot of upside in the tax reform getting done, because the at the end of the day, that's going to be very positive for the economy. Uh, Governor, just, just very quickly here, we've seen a growth in net loans or the, the amount of credit that's come into the system. I think we're up 20% just about for the average for this year. Are you comfortable with the pace of growth in debt? Uh, 
yes, we've also uh, closely looked at that situation. Uh, may I also point out that from, uh, as a baseline, the credit to GDP ratio in the Philippines, uh, if you compare that across many countries in Asia, we're actually one of the lowest. Only Indonesia is lower. We're at 63% of GDP. Most of the economies in the region at the level at the same uh, or similar level of development as the Philippines are in the 100 percent plus range. So Philippines is uh, basically in, in catch up mode right now. And if you look at the NPL data in the Philippines, it's actually at historic lows. So at the micro level, uh, loans are being carefully uh, managed from a risk perspective. And at the macro level, the 20% growth is still relatively mm -hmm. consistent with the uh, rapid growth of the economy. As you know, the Philippines is growing at more than 6% for the last six years. 